<clears throat> okay, so can everyone see my screen? I think so. it should be, should be yes. fine. Okay, yes. so uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And it's, of course, a pleasure for me to give a talk here today. And as you already said, I want to also want to speak about Kopmanism, but now Kopmanism for dynamical systems on completely regular spaces. And this is based on a joint work with uh, Balint Farkas, who's also in Wuppertal. And I want to start with the classical situation. So basically, I recall some of the things Nikolai just told us in the last talk. But let's write them down again. So this is the first part of my talk. So topological dynamics, topological dynamics. And let's define again what a topological dynamical system is. It's slightly different than in the last talk, which is basically the same. So what is a topological dynamical system? And classically, this is, is uh, simply a pair X phi. And now my space is called X in contrast to Nikolai's talk. So uh, X phi is a topological dynamical system. Dynamical system. Well, if X is a compact space, compact space, and phi is a transformation, a semi-group or group action on that space. And in our case, or in this talk, I'm prim primarily interested in the in semi-flows, so in actions of R plus on of the positive reals. So what we consider here is a continuous map from R plus times X to X, mapping a time T and a point X to a new point in the space phi T of X. And this, as I said, should be continuous and it should be a semi-flow. So it should have the semi-flow properties. Phi zero is the identity on X or so at time zero, nothing happens. And then phi T plus S is the same as phi T composed with phi s for all times t and s larger equal to zero. Okay, so this is similar to what Nikolai just said. And we, we just switched the group of the integers by, uh, to the semi-group R plus, but everything else is the same. Okay, and we have already seen some examples of topological dynamical systems in the last talk, but let me also give you a very simple example, which you all know in the uh, in the time continuous case. So this is an example. Example, we just take X to be the one point compactification of the positive uh, reals and the dynamics are just given by translation. So we take uh, point X and at t, so we just um, translate x with t. Can we ask questions on the fly? Yes, yes, of course. And the infinity goes to what point? Uh, yes, I, I should mention this also. So um, we also have to specify, of course, thank you, how the, um, the point infinity is mapped and we just take it as a fixed point. So infinity is mapped to itself. Thank you. So this is defined for all x larger or equal to zero and all times uh, also in the reals, um, positive reals. Okay, so this is a very basic example of the topological dynamical system. And actually it is it, it comes from a, an ordinary differential equation, in the following sense. So if we consider the very basic ODE, u dot of t is one, and the initial value is x. So we take a fixed x and we solve this uh, initial value problem, then phi t of x is precisely the solu or solution at time t. So this is very basic, but let's write it down anyway. So this, uh, this semi-flow is derived from this, this ODE or from this initial value problem. And of course, you can now use other, other differential equations to define uh, or to obtain other semi-flows. So I will write this down loosely, but um, or informally. Um, so semi-flows, we can construct a lot of examples by uh, considering ordinary differential equations or so such initial value problems as above. So I will write this down like this. Okay, so this is of course another motivation why we should look at such systems because if we are interested in properties of solutions of, uh, of ODEs, we are possibly or probably also interested in such topological dynamical systems and their properties. And you can now uh, examine such properties by means of topological dynamics, so uh, methods of topological dynamics, but 
as in the last talk, we want to use operator theory. We want to use linear functional analysis to study such such systems. And there, and there again, the Copan uh, linearization comes into play. Let's also recall this concept re real briefly. So uh, this is the next definition. So given yet, given now uh, such a such a topological dynamical system, let X phi be a topological dynamical system. We can define its Copan semigroup, Copan semigroup, semigroup T phi, and this is now a semigroup of op linear operators on the Banach sp space C x, C of x, so T phi T, T larger or equal to zero. These are all operators on C of x, and they are um, they are defined in. Oh, <laughs> something went wrong there, I'm sorry. So L of C of X. Okay, and how do we define them? Well, we just take a function and compose it with phi T for every F in C of X and time T. Okay, and in this way, as Nicolai has already told us, we obtain a global linearization of our dynamical system. So we start from any dynamical system, nonlinear, non whatever, and now we obtain a, a semigroup of linear operators on the Banach space C of X. And as a matter of fact, we also obtain in this, uh, in this situation, we obtain a C0 semigroup. So remark, we even obtain that T phi is strongly continuous, so it is is a C0 semigroup. Okay, so far so good. And now you can use all the tools of operator theory and in particular of semigroup theory to uh, examine the Koopman semigroup and thereby uh, the original dynamical system. And this is done, it has been done in the past, but uh, this is not the content of the talk because here I want to consider more general situation and more general in which sense. For this, we have to go back to the start. So I will go back to the first definition and to the title. And as you can see from the title, what I want to do is I want to consider more general spaces. So instead of looking at compact spaces, I want to consider more general ones and namely completely regular spaces. So completely, completely regular. And what is a completely regular space? Uh, let's let me recall this briefly. So this is a Hausdorff space in which you can separate uh, closed sets from points by functions. So if I have have a closed subset of my space and I've, if I have some point which is not contained in that closed subset, then I can find a function which is one on the point and vanishes on the on the closed closed set. So I can separate my closed subset with a continuous function from my point x. And yeah, why? Uh, what, what are examples of such spaces? Well, every metric space, and in particular, every normed vector space um, is such a completely regular space. And on the other hand, also every locally compact space. So for example, r or r to the n are locally compact and thus completely regular spaces. Okay, and then of course the question is why should I even bother with such more general systems? Why are these interesting? And the reason are basically the examples. So let me also return to the examples now. Well, first of all, if we forget about compact spaces, we could uh, choose to not compactify here and just take the positive reals in the first example. But this is not very essential. What is more uh, essential is the following third example we can now consider, and that are semi-flows arising from PDEs. So semi-flows from PDEs. So it's before we could we, uh, we could um, examine the semi-flows arriving uh, arising from ODEs, but now we can also uh, look at semi-flows arising from PDEs because let's say we have some Banach space E, so E is a Banach space, and you can imagine this is some function space, some LP space or a space of continuous functions. And you have an operator on that space. So A from the domain of A. So this only defined on a subset of the Banach space. 
is some operator which is not necessarily linear. So just any map from a part uh, from a subset of the Banach space to E. And then you are interested in the solutions of the evolution equation, this nonlinear evolution equation, a u dot of t is a u of t and u zero is some fixed initial value. So this is our, um, our problem. And for example, so you should now imagine A to be some differential operator, of course. So for example, you could look at um, Navier-Stokes equations or, um, or uh, reaction diffusion equations and so on. So you have some nonlinear evolution equation. And in many situations, when you find a solution in some sense, then uh, this, um, this gives rise again to a semi-flow of maps on your Banach space or on a subset of your Banach space. And your Banach space is no longer locally compact. It's metric space, but uh, no longer locally compact. And so it is, it is reasonable to consider uh, dynamical systems, which are more general than just the semi-flows on compact spaces. Okay, and now, of course, the question becomes, can we use this well-established machinery or philosophy of Koopman uh, semi-groups or Koopmanism also in this more general concept context? So what can we do in this more general context in terms of uh, Koopman semi-groups, in terms of Koopmanism? And the goal of this talk is to show that yeah, you can still do some things in this case, um, even though we have only started to uh, start in the journey to um, yeah in the in the in this new approach to to non-compact dynamical systems. Okay, so how how do we proceed? What do we do? Well, the first step is quite easy. So we have to define the Copan semi group. Well, we can just do it as before, but we replace the Banach space Cx by this Banach space Cb of x. So we just take all bounded continuous functions instead of all continuous functions on, on our space X, which is now no longer compact. Okay, but now the first problem arises. And this is here, namely in this remark, because now we do not have a C0 semigroup anymore, for example. This is one, one problem because, uh, for example, yeah, what is this? an easy example where you can see this? just take the, the reals and the translation on the reals, so basically the semi-flow from, from earlier, and now you take uh, CB of R, so the uh, continuous bounded functions on, on the real numbers, then uh, the shift semi-group, which is the induced Koopman semi-group, is not strongly continuous. So if you have ever seen some lectures or uh, yeah, lectures on semigroup theory, you know, you know that the shift semigroup on the space of all continuous bounded functions on, on R is not, not a strongly continuous semigroup. So what can we do to fix this or to overcome, overcome this obstacle? And um, this is the second part of the talk. And oh, sorry, for this we have to um, to consider different, different topologies on on the space CB of X. So the norm topology on CBX is not the right topology to consider um, for the purposes of Koopman linearization. And I want to uh, want to now to propose or yeah present a, a topology which uh, which does the job. So let's talk about topologies topologies on the space. CB of X. And what topologies, what natural topologies do we have uh, on this space? Well, I already mentioned one, this is the norm topology, Not, nothing new. So the norm topology, tor norm, I will denote it like this. But as I said, this, this has problems because it is too strong. So this is too strong topology and we do not obtain strong continuity of our semi-group with respect to this topology. So this is not, not perfect. However, we also have a second natural topology on spaces of continuous functions. There's a second very natural topology that is the space of compact, uh, the topology of compact convergence, also known as the compact open topology. So 
the sequence converges with respect to this topology if it if it converges uniformly on every compact subset of X. And this is also very natural because, um, yeah, because um, yeah, if you have a limit of such a sequence uh, of continuous functions converging with respect to this topology, then the limit is again continuous. So, okay, but anyway, so we have this compact open topology. This is also very natural, compact open topology, tor C. But again, this has a problem because this topology is not complete. So if you are working in analysis, you usually want to work with complete objects. And if you now consider this topology on the space CB of X, then this is not a complete topological vector space. So uh, you have not every Cauchy sequence or Cauchy net converges. Okay, so we now have these two topologies, which are very natural, but they both have their uh, disadvantages, but we can fix these if we just mix the two topologies together. And this is this is now uh, the right topology to consider the following definition, the so-called mixed topology. So the mixed topology, mixed topology, and I will write it as tor m. And this is this is yeah this is the finest finest locally convex topology, convex topology on CBX such that um, such that the topology coincides with the compact open topology on bounded sets or norm bounded sets. Norm bounded sets. <clears throat> okay, so maybe this is a bit um, yeah, not not so easy to understand, but really this is the right topology to consider on CBX. And let me convince you of this with with the following uh, properties. So let may me, I ask a yes. simple question? Yes. What does it mean? Topology coincides on some set of. Okay. Sets? Yeah, I I've just written it down a bit loosely. So what I mean is, whenever I take uh, a norm bounded set. So a ball, let's say, in the norms, so or all, all functions which have supremum norms small or equal to uh, n, or yeah, then if I restrict my topology to the subset, so my topology tor m, then the topology coincides with the compact open topology restricted to that subset. So your your whole space, of course. Uh, contains many unbounded subsets, but if you are, if I look at bounded subsets, then convergence. I I will just write this down in the properties, then it becomes more clear, ho hopefully. But on on bounded sets, the topologies coincide, but outside of bounded sets, um, they do not necessarily co coincide. So this means that I take arbitrary norm bounded set, and I induce topology. On exactly. to it from tau m and from uh, another topology, and the induced topology are just the same. Yes, exactly. Yes. Thank you. This is what is meant. Okay, and um, yeah, and now this this has has um, has nice properties. So first of all, of course, the topology is of course this sandwich between the two topologies. So we have our compact open topology and our mixed topology and the norm topology and the and mixed topology is now really a mixture of both topologies. And, um, and now we have fixed the problem of uh, completeness more or less. So uh, our space CBX equipped with, with now this mixed topology is, is now complete in many situations, I say. So this is complete whenever X <clears throat> is the so-called compactly generated space, compactly generated space. For example, so you do not really need the definition here, but because this is satisfied for, for almost all examples. For example, if X is a metric space or X is a locally compact space, these are all locally um, compactly generated, locally compact, and therefore, your space CBX is now complete with respect to your mixed topology. 
And um, yeah, you also have additional nice properties such as that you have a Reese representation theorem for the dual space and so on. So many things you have in the compact case and now transfer to CBX if you um, replace the norm topology by this Tor M topology. And in particular, and this is now the key, what we want, 2.3. Um, another proposition. Now, if, if you have now a topological dynamical system and uh, your space is compactly generated, so this is not really a restriction, compactly generated, then you know that the induced uh, Koopman semigroup T phi is strongly continuous with respect to with respect to this uh, Tor M topology. So if you look at, um, at a, you take a element F and you look at T maps to T T or T phi T of F, then this is continuous with respect to the Tor M topology on C V of X. So this is continuous. So this means so this means that the uh, Koopman semigroup is Tor M strongly continuous. Strongly continuous. And um, and it is also and this is important. So if you have semigroup theory on non-normed space, so on more general locally convex spaces, as in this case, then you need more than just strong continuity to develop a reasonable theory because you have to write down integrals and so on. And for this, you need uh, also so-called uh, local equicontinuity. So to um, locally equicontinuous. Equicontinuous. So in the norm case, this is automatic, but here this is an important property for semigroups on non-normed spaces. Okay. So what I basically wanted to tell you in this uh, in this talk is how to what what the right topology is on CBX to consider to consider Koopmanism for non uh, compact spaces and the right topology is this mixed topology. This was also already uh, is or also already done in parts or in more general uh, in more special cases in a series of papers by Do and Neuberger in the 90s. But you can, uh, but you can uh, extend their results and now start um, start to develop Koopman theory for for um, this more general class of dynamical systems. If you consider this topology, this mixed topology on the space C B of X, and for example, so what we did in our uh, our article was to consider um, attractors or so attractors for dynamical systems. And relate them to stability notions of the correspond corresponding Koopman semigroup, um, which is uh, an approach um, uh, introduced or uh, yeah by Victoria Kühner in a PhD thesis. So she was a PhD, also PhD state, um, student of Rainer, and looked at this. And we also did some some things of. On attractors, how you can characterize attractors in terms of the Koopman representation, and this can, with this topology, now be extended to uh, to, the, to uh, the completely regular case. And you can also, yeah, um, prove characterization theorem. So you can characterize uh, the Koopman semigroup in terms of of algebraic and lattice theoretic structures. So Similar things as Nikolai told us before in the last talk with the C star dynamic and C star algebra, the categorical equivalence can also be done here in this more general framework. But of course, this is only the beginning, uh, beginning of a journey. So there's a lot to be done here. You can still uh, look at spectral theory. You can look at Lyapunov functions and such concepts and try to to um, generalize some known. Uh, results from the compact case to the completely regular case. So, yeah. So this is basically what I wanted to tell. Uh, so if you have, if, if you plan to use Koopmanism in a non-compact space uh, on for non-compact spaces, uh, I highly recommend to look at this uh, topology, which is um, also discussed in a quite nice book of of J. B. Cooper. So, um, yeah. 
Okay, so thank you very much uh, for your attention. Okay, thank you, Henrik, for opening this interesting door. Let's see what the future brings in this context. Any questions or comments from the audience? I have a question. Yes. Please. What was the specific reason which made you consider this mixed topology now instead of using the terminology of bicontinuous semigroups? Okay, so you could also use, so, okay, there are two reasons. Okay, so maybe to explain, you could also say instead of um, if instead of introducing this topology, which I said, um, this mixed topology, you could also say that the Copan semigroup is now a bi so-called bicontinuous semigroup with respect to two topologies. So the two topologies I just listed here, the norm topology and the mm -hmm. compact open topology. And there's a concept of semigroup generalizing strongly continuous semigroups by adding a, an additional locally convex topology. Um, and you could then uh, examine also, yeah, the Copan semigroup as a bicontinuous semigroup. However, I think, so, um, yeah, if you do so, you have to pass to a more complicated concept of semigroup, I would say. So either you have to um, use a more complicated topology, the mixed topology, or you have to use a more complicated concept of semigroup. Mm -hmm. And these both, both approaches are valid and they can both be done and they are equivalent to some extent. Um, but I find, so what I like about this mixed topology is that you can also find a version of this Gelfand theorem, which Nikolai presented earlier for, uh, for completely regular spaces. Um, so you can characterize abstractly what a CBX space is. And for this, you need this mixed topology because this does not work by continuously. Is there a reference to this in your paper? Uh, yes, this is all basically all contained in this book. Um, I think it's called Sax, Al or Sex Algebras uh, by, um, by Cooper. So I, th I think it has a longer title, but it's a book by I James. I think it's Sax Spaces and Applications. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Christian saved me. <laughs> yeah, Sex Spaces and sex Applications and there, um, the, this is explained how how um, how completely regular spaces, um, yeah, how the corresponding algebraic category looks like. So, thanks. Good question. Okay. Um, there is uh, an, you have a question? Yes. Um, the uh, attracting sets attractors of nonlinear systems can be of uh, very uh, diverse, very difficult geometrical nature. There are strange attractors, there are some other, uh, there is a big science about this. Uh, how can uh, one see it uh, from the perspective of the semi-group? For example, uh, you told us uh, how one can distinguish between situations uh, when the system has a tractor or does not has. But well, what can we say? Okay, suppose we have a, have a tractor. Can we say for at least does it has only one point set attracting or it has more than one point attracting set? Okay, so um, for this, I can, um, so as I said, I can recommend um, this, this articles and this article and the PhD thesis of Victoria Aquino who discusses the connection between attractors. So there are many different kinds of attract, uh, notions of attractors, of course, for dynamical systems, but there are also very different notions of stability for, uh, for semi-groups, so strong stability, weak stability, and so on. And these are related. So if I have uh, an attractor, so an attractor means yeah, I have a set which, um, yeah, such that every point is <laughs> is attracted by the set in some sense, and the, you have to specify the sense in which it's, it's attracted. But if you translate this, this means that if you, if I have a function, <clears throat> a continuous function on yeah, on my uh, space which vanishes here on my closed subset M, which that's, if M is the attractor. 
this means that the Copan semi group, so this vanishes on, on M, this means that the Copan semi group of this function goes to zero in some sense. So the attractiveness of the set corresponds to a stability property of the Copan semi group. And you can then relate different concepts of attractivity to different concept, concepts of stability. And yeah, you can also um, use this functional analytic approach to sometimes show the existence of attractors. So this is what we yeah, short, briefly discuss in our article. So in this article on Copernism on uh, regular, completely regular spaces. But yeah, what, about you the want shape, to... what about the shape of attractor? How can it be described in this infinite dimensional setting? Yeah, that, that I uh, I cannot tell. I, I'm not sure if you actually can tell it because your CBX basically um, does not contain the ge geometric, so it contains the topological information about the attractor and not so much the geometric uh, information. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, I missed the term generator in your talk. Yes. So usually semi-groups or strongly continuous semigroups have a generator. What about your semigroups? Yes, they also have a generator. So if you, um, uh, as I said, if you look, uh, if you take this concept of bicontinuous semigroups, for example, you have the usual, con you can generalize the usual concept of a generator for such semigroups. And you can also do this for these equi uh, locally equicontinuous strongly continuous semigroups on locally convex vector spaces. So in both worlds, in both theories, there is the concept of, of, uh, of the generator and it's just the, it is an immediate generalization to, uh, of, the, of the norm case. And yeah, you can now also characterize the Koopman semigroups in terms of their generators, for example. So uh, <laughs> if we relate back to the talk of uh, the first talk of today in the morning session um, on derivations. So uh, the, the generators of Koopman um, semigroups are precisely derivations. So derivations on um, CBX in, in this case. Okay, and then you have, you, ha you have uh, an exercise in your book uh, about the same, to find the, the generator and to prove that it is a derivative. Yeah, but that's an abstract characteristic. Jochen, yeah. which has been ignored. So Alexandre Mora wanted to ask a question for about five minutes now. Oh, Alexandre? Yes, but maybe it's too late. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No, it's anyhow, you, it's time on your talk, but you yes. still, still have two minutes. We will have the coffee break anyway after this yes, uh, it, it, session. It was more about some uh, suggestion, but we can discuss later. And maybe I will also discuss this in the perspective of my own talk, so it's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe we can discuss after your talk then. I think there's also a break after, after your talk where we could discuss. Okay, and fine. But still, I want to...